Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 2, Configuring Physical Connectivity, Chapter 3, Connecting Beamware Virtual Domains. In Episode 1, we learned some golden questions that will lead you to connect pretty much anything to ACI. Amongst those things which relate to the first question are virtual domains, which include integrating Beamware, Hyper-V, Red Hat, and other hypervisor networking flavors. In this chapter, you will learn how to create a virtual machine manager or VMM domain and integrate virtual networking to ACI in order to configure one network instead of multiple. This provides APIC with the ability to connect and authenticate via its out-of-band management interface against the most popular virtual machine managers in the market through their APIs and therefore get complete visibility into their inventory at the host and VM level. Next, we will configure the physical network for each hypervisor host, just the way we learned in the previous episode, this time including the VMM domain in the AEP you will use. This will allow us to configure the logical network once, centrally through the APIC, and distribute that configuration consistently across multiple servers and hypervisors, reducing potential errors and time. The result? One network. We will now be able to monitor both physical and virtual networking from one or even multiple hypervisors at the same time, as well as container networking from multiple platforms. Let's start by learning how to integrate Beamware environments to ACI. There are two options we can use. One, using the Beamware's vSphere distributed switch, or VDS, which is a Beamware native networking switch. Or two, using Cisco ACI Virtual Edge, or AVE. The first one uses VMware VDS, which is a traditional layer 2 virtual switch that maps 802.1Q VLANs to port groups. You don't need to install anything special in VMware for this to work, as it fully leverages VMware's APIs. However, you will need to extend multiple VLANs to each host. The second one is a virtual machine that allows you to NCAP and DCAP VXLAN traffic at the host level. This works by extending only the ACI infrastructure VLAN to the host. However, you will need to install an additional component, which is the AVE virtual machine. In this chapter, we will only focus on VMware VDS integration. Therefore, we will cover AVE in another chapter, and especially when we talk about VPOD or virtual ACI. Keep in mind that both integrations are fully supported by Cisco solution support, which means that you have a single number reach for both Cisco and VMware. You can also connect any VDS without integration. We would do this by connecting it just as a layer to switch, as we learned in previous chapters. However, you would not have visibility nor consistent configurations. You may also need to go this way if you're using regular V switches, which is common if you don't have VDS or Beamware Enterprise Plus licenses in your environment. Let's briefly understand the process ACI follows to integrate Beamware VDS. As we said, we will first create a Beamware VMM domain and we will create a dynamic VLAN pool that will associate to it. We use dynamic VLAN pools with BMM domains because we don't want to statically map a VLAN to a port group or EBG every time we create one. Therefore, we will let ACI pick a VLAN for us from this pool. Remember, VLANs are significant only between the leaf and the endpoint anyways. When we create the VMM domain, APIC will request vCenter to create a standard Beamware VDS by using Beamware's APIs. This is the way any orchestrator like vRealize, Ansible, and others work as well. So, as we said before, we're not installing anything special. Then, we will configure the physical network in order to attach the ESXi nodes. This is where we will add the VMM to the AEP. Once ready, the VM admin will have to attach the ESX nodes to the newly created VDS, and we're done. This will allow us to then perform the logical network configuration in APIC once by creating an EPG that will automatically be pushed to vCenter through an API call requesting to create a DVS port group with its corresponding VLAN. Remember we will cover the logical network configuration and EPGs in Module 3. Let's now see all this in action. We'll start with our traditional golden questions. First, what do we want to connect to ACI? The answer is vCenter and ESX nodes. Therefore, we will create a VMware VMM domain which will request vCenter to create a standard VDS on its behalf. 
The second question is, do I need VLANs or vSANs? And I do. I will need a dynamic VLAN pool and I will include VLAN 2110 to 2130. Feel free to use your own VLAN IDs. The third step is to create an AEP and assign my VMN domain in there. Let's perform those three steps now on the GUI. For the first step, click on Virtual Networking, VMM Domains, and maximize VMware. Unlike me, you should have an empty configuration. Let's go ahead and right click over VMware and click Create vCenter Domain. Let's add a name to the domain and make sure VDS is selected as our integration option. Then, for step two, go to the VLAN pool section and click on Create VLAN pool. This will be a dynamic VLAN pool and we will include VLAN 2110 to 2130 in it. Hit OK and submit and we're back on the VMM creation window. Let's perform step three then by going to the AEP section and create an AEP from here. Just add a name to it and we should be done. Finally, we need to link ACI with vCenter. So let's scroll down. Go to vCenter credential sections, add a name to this credential set and specify the username and password you want to use. Last, we will indicate the IP address or URL for your vCenter and the DVS version you want to use. If you want to use something different than the vCenter's version, you can specify it here. Next, we need to specify the VMware data center where you want to instantiate this new VDS on. This value can be found on your vCenter. Finally, associate your credentials from the previous step and hit OK. You can also automate the port channel mode for your VM NIC or physical adapters to use on your ESX server, as well as the discovery protocol to enable on the BDS itself. In my case, I will use MAC pinning since I am using UCS with Fabric Interconnect and I will also choose CDP. Click Submit and we're done. Let's take a look at what happened on the vCenter site. As you can see, a new folder with the name of our VMM domain was created automatically. Within it, a VDS and two port groups were automatically created as well. If we go back to APIC, we now have visibility inside vCenter from the APIC. We can always verify and adjust our DVS specific policies from here. And also, if you have an alarm relevant to the network reported on vCenter, for instance, a host not responding, we will also get that notification on APIC, as you can see. Let's go back to our golden questions. The next one is, which interface do you want to configure and how? Remember, we will need to create an interface profile for this. Specify the interfaces to use and the type of interface you will need, like VPC in this case, as well as any specific policy you want to apply to that interface, such as CDP, LACP, etc. The most important part is to include the AEP you created in step 3 as part of the policy group. Once that is done, we will just choose the switches where we want to connect the server on by creating a switch profile and associate the interface profile to it. As a side note, remember that we must add the ESX host to the newly created VDS on vCenter. That should do it if you have ESX rack servers. In my case, I have Cisco UCS with Fabric Interconnects. So let's perform this final two steps in my environment. I will connect Fabric Interconnect A to interface 111 on each leaf using VPC and LACP. You should do something similar for FIB, but I won't show it here for the sake of time. Remember, we have already configured the VDS by creating a VMM domain, and each host we attach to it will use MAC pinning on its VM NICs based on that configuration. So in the end, you will have three poor channels. Let's perform these steps now. First, I will add my 1096.4.201 server to the newly created BDS. This server is currently living inside UCS Mini on service profile VMware 3. We have multiple network adapters and notice that the ones facing my ACI fabric have been manually pre-configured with all the VLANs from the VLAN pool. In this case, VLAN 2110 to 2130. They correspond to VM NIC 2 and VM NIC 4 on VMware as displayed on your screen. Let's add this server to the newly created VDS. Right click on the VDS, select Add and Manage Hosts, and let's select our host first. Then 
Let's pick our physical adapters, in this case VMNIC2 and VMNIC4, click Next, Next, and Finish, and we are done adding the server to the VDS. Let's now go back to the APIC and finish our configuration. Click on Fabric, Access Policies, and let's configure the switch and interface profile through the wizard. Go to the Quick Search section, Interfaces and Policies, and click Configure Interface. Let's choose Leaves 101 and 102 for our first VPC to Fabric Interconnect A and include Interface 111 for both of them. We'll then specify this is a VPC interface and let's finally create a VPC policy group which will have CDP enabled, LDP disabled. We will also make sure we include our AEP from Step 3 and I will set LACP negotiation to active. Click Submit, Next and Finish and we're done. Remember, you can always check the status of your VPC by either going to the Fabric and Inventory section or through the CLI as covered in Episode 2 of this module. If you ever need to add more ESX nodes, you don't need to repeat all steps. Just run steps 4 and 5, reuse everything else and you should be done. You can also reuse the same switch and interface profile if attaching to the same leaves. But keep in mind, you must always create a new VPC policy group each time you create a new VPC, as VPC and poor channel policy groups are not reusable, unlike access policy groups. There are a couple of add-ons that may be useful for you to consider when integrating VMware to ACI. One, there's an ACI and UCS integration application that can be installed on APIC which allows you to automatically push the VLANs from the VLAN pool in the BMM domain all the way to the Fabric Interconnect and the server. This avoids manual VLAN configuration on UCS. And two, there is a plugin you can install on vCenter that allows the VM admin to configure the logical configuration and ACI while providing visibility into the physical network as well. These are all optional and we'll cover them in more detail in other chapters. As a summary, we will learn how to integrate VMware to ACI using VDS, which will help us consolidating monitoring and will allow us to provide consistent configurations, especially at the logical network level, which we will cover in Module 3. Remember, ACI provides automated Layer 2 extension between leaves, so you will be able to perform vMotion anywhere over ACI. We also learned that there are some optional add-ons that may be useful to the VM and UCS admin and that we will cover them in upcoming chapters. ACI provides you with a better, simpler, and secure network, any size, anywhere, and on any cloud. If you want to learn more about other common tasks and how ACI radically simplifies network provisioning and operations, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.